Okay, so you bought yourself a dinky toy. You want to see if the motor's running. So you've taken off the bottom part. You've opened it up. You found a battery. You put it in. And of course you flick the switch over and you're just doing that. Well, first thing you've got to do is get yourself a propeller and flick it. Make sure that the connections to the back of the motor, to the positive of the battery is making a good connection. And that's the very first way of finding out if your motor works. Well, obviously in this case, it's not. So what can we do? Well, we can take out this motor and the first thing that we will see is this shaft is bent it's bent you're not going to get much joy out of that the second thing is if you can find yourself a multimeter like this one and I don't know if you can see the readings on there Let's see if we can do something with that. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Let's put that under there like that. Okay. Yeah, you can just about read it. And you put it on the lowest ohm setting. You'll see the little horseshoe there. That's omega. Put it on the lowest setting. You need to put one of these probes onto the positive side. This is the positive side here. It doesn't matter which lead you use because you're doing connectivity and resistance, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and the other one on the body of the motor. If you get a resistance, in this case, uh, 5.8 coming to 6 ohms, okay, milliohms, okay, that shows you have a continuity, which means that motor, by rights, should run. Okay, now, what you can do is you can put a soldered connection onto the body and a soldered connection to the positive side. Now, let's try that again. And we get 13... Well, 11, 11.2 ohms. So that says that by rights, that should run. So we get a battery and we get a propeller. Just the propeller onto the shaft. So you can flick it, get your battery Either end. In actual fact, it doesn't really particularly matter which way around you put this. But anyway, we're going the body side to negative, positive side from the centre, the positive of the battery. And we flick it. Now, it still doesn't run. So, what is the problem? Well, one of the things you can do to overcome this problem is with your dinky toy first of all a lot of the problems are to do with dirt and connection you'll see there's a lot of paint in here not so much around by the spring because what's happening is the designer wants the body of that to make connection with the body of the dinky toy run through the frame and come out at the spring which is the negative part of the battery now you're probably saying okay i already get that all right but what about if you clean it you, you you've got to strip your dinky toy anyway to paint it so if you strip all the paint off and you clean up these parts here, yeah, 
there's a good chance that you won't need to do any wiring connections so but you may have to anyway so what do you do well that's the next part so this is what you do get yourself some cotton buds some uh ipro panel it's um alcohol rubbing alcohol okay it's just to get things clean you've got your motor you've used the multimeter you can see it's got continuity so one of the first things you must do is you must know what position because if you look at the end of this is that spindle is not in the middle so you put the motor in and rotate it until whoops until you know which way round that motor goes so obviously that goes that way round yeah it seats comfortably the spindle is in the middle of the fuselage you now want to mark probably using a sharpie pen like this which way is up so you put a line down it yeah see that line down it so now you have an idea because what you want to do is attach a wire about here to the right hand side if you're right handed if you're left handed you probably want to go left hand side but there's a little breathing hole there so you probably want to stay to the right hand side so what we have to do we have to get that clean so we have a little file here you can use uh, a nail file it doesn't really matter much and just the right hand side of that line just rough it up a little bit because we're going to put some solder on there and as much solder as you can get we take a little bit of alcohol pass the child proof lock squirt a bit in the top of the lid there you get your cotton bud and you get that nice and clean okay you don't want any grease on there nothing okay and all that dirt or whatever's on it will now rub off okay now hopefully what you can do put that back into the dinky toy just to hold it you need somewhere to hold it it's round it'll, it'll run around your bench and it's just to hold it in place okay get your soldering iron and this must be tinned okay this is a brand new soldering iron I haven't got the right tip on it uh, so I'm just gonna have to use it as it is uh, but anyway there you go have a little bit of flux this is flux here and what you need to do we need to tin the motor okay so we're going to put a little bit of heat on and then as soon as you reckon it's high enough put some solder onto the motor okay There you go. Now, this piece of wire, offhand, I don't know what gauge it is. Got to have some data wire. And put some flux on the end. Oops. Up on the end of the exposed metal parts. And what we need to do is get our helping hands, which I've not prepared. Uh, where have they gone? Actually, I don't know. Where have they gone? Oh, well, don't need them. Uh, you get some solder on the end there. And we tin that. There you go. So you're now tinning the ends of the cable now I've probably got the soldering on a little bit too hot actually 
or something like that by experience. Now we have to get this soldered onto there. Put a little bit more flux on the end of that one. Put some solder on the end of there. And if you can get the darn thing to stay still for five seconds. There we go. Just blowing it to get it colder. Because you might want to pick it up in a second or two. Have a little bit of tissue ready at hand. And just clean that up. Because you don't want flux being everywhere. Okay. Now you want to be able to bend this up a little bit and what we're going to do a little bit later is when we have this soldered to the spring. Now this spring you must get this spring as clean as you can possibly get it because we need to solder that to the spring. So we're going to tin that spring I'm hoping I can find something to uh, put a little spot of flux on. Making sure the positive side of the battery is touching the positive side. Of that motor and now we're going to put a prop on it and give it a flick now obviously you want a battery that you know is good all right and that's still not running make sure everything's lined up Now of course I'm doing this without switching it, but I happen to know you don't really need the switch. Okay, so it naturally wants to spin anti-clockwise, I can see that. But you see you have connect connectivity between the body and the frame, the frame to the spring and through the wire to the body. So you have a good connection, yeah? And I can see the connection is going to the centre of the the motor and it's still not running okay this is the bit where we take the motor out and take it apart so let's flick the battery out okay take the prop off now you can just double check I'm just going to try and double check it by holding it physically holding it onto the battery, put the prop on, ah, now that runs, see how it runs, of course it stops before I get there, and there you go, it's now running, can you see that, yeah, so that's just by putting a connection to the body and now it works and now I have a positive connection to the positive side of the motor right now can we make it better well yeah very probably because one thing we can do is electronics cleaner isopole and if I can get the lid off you'll have a little tube the tube goes in there okay and you squirt as much as this into the motor 
Ja. And you give it a bit of a spin. And that gets all the rubbish out. Coming out of that motor. Because it's bound to be quite dirty in there. Okay. There you go. It's not going to hurt it. I wouldn't do it if I thought it was going to hurt it. Spin it around a few times. Okay. We could we could actually try it like that and see if it works any better. That's the battery. Now obviously I'm doing this without any help of any kind, so please bear with me. Okay, let's give that a flick. Wow. You see the difference? That's really spinning now. That's just going for it. You've got a good motor there. So by checking it with your multimeter and seeing there's a continuity, you know it's retrievable. And all it's taken is attaching a wire and putting some cleaning through it, fluid through the motor. And that's really going now. Yeah. So, we'll go on to the next part. Okay, so I've picked this motor up here, it's a different motor, and you can see it's a bit rusted up, a bit dirty, but I've tested it, there's a resistance there. So by rights, that should work. So I put some of the, um, I put all through it, which I'll just show you quickly again, it's this stuff, yeah. Buy it online and you've got to get this clean so let's get these connections clean first i've got a drill here make sure you're wearing some glasses some description get everything nice and clean now there is something you can do one moment If you haven't got a Dremel, then don't worry, all you need is some trusty, uh, very fine wire wool, and you can just rub that, rub that in. And this is just as effective, it's just I'm trying to save on time. Okay, and make sure that any straggly bits of wire wool is not present because it will conduct electricity probably in parts you don't want it to be so now if you get a motor and any part of it is green okay this is a chemical reaction what you do you get yourself a cotton bud and you use white vinegar white vinegar you rub it on okay and that will take off all the green gunge and then you just let it dry so we're going to put a little bit of alcohol in there just so we can get nice and clean see dirty already get it all nice and clean okay now get everything nice and clean We'll be seeing this again. This is uh, a P800 grade glass paper, and we'll just give that a rub. Okay, 
So, on to the next bit. Okay, now we've got to take this apart. Now I've just got, um, what do you call these things? I don't know what you call it, pointy thing. You'll see these two little tabs, push them back. Yeah. Now that should release. Now you'll notice before you take it out, there's a little hole there. On the opposite side, there, there's a little copper tab and that has just come off. You need to know which way around to put it back. And I've just accidentally knocked it off, but never mind. I'm going to push out the stator, this is called the stator. Okay, and you'll have a look inside there. I don't know if you can see very well because of the light. And there's your stator. That is a bit gunged up. Uh, so what I'm going to do, take a clean cotton bud, give it a white round. Okay. Yeah, there's bits of, bits of dirt on there. Yeah, that's just carbon. Okay. And you'll see that inside there, I don't think, oh, I have a torch. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Inside there, there's one magnet. There's one magnet. And you only want one magnet. So let's have a look at the stator. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Now, there's a resistance there because we've tested it on the multimeter earlier. Do you see this? I hope you can focus all right. See this copper bit here? We need to very lightly, see a bit worn and dirty. You get that bright. So we're just going to take a little bit of glass paper that's 800 grade and just lightly give that a rub. Not too much. And turn it over. Yeah. You make sure that you do both sides. Okay, and we'll grab some more of this alcohol. Good old clean. you take out any bits of paper that might be remaining and of course there's a very simple type of bearing there to make sure that's nice and clean a bit of dirt on it let's get everything clean that's all you got to do okay and for as long as you have continuity and resistance that should be okay now Put those to one side. So now you have this part. Now you'll notice, I don't know how good the focus is on this, but there's a little tiny little wire there, a little tiny little wire there, and one connects to this side here, the other one connects to that side here, and it's spinning. Okay, so we just need to make sure that that's nice and clean. So we dip our alcohol in. Give that a little bit of rub. Okay. And yeah, let's get a little bit of a rub. Get that nice and clean. And what did I do? My oh, there it is. Glass paper there. Just ever so slightly. There too. Okay. 
and make sure that's all back in one piece. Now, hopefully that should work. So what we're going to do, this end goes into this end. Make sure your copper is pointing up. Goes into there and you can slightly turn it. Okay. Hold it. Guide that back into the body. Now this is the fiddly bit and I'm not expecting it to go right first time. Especially when there's a camera and there you go, it pops in. Now have we got this the right way around? So I'm going to look. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need to turn this body around slightly. Hopefully. That's it. Is it in the right position? No, it's not. It's not quite in the right position. I've got to turn this around. I think it's going to go. Off. So I've put this back all back together. I've soldered a piece of wire on. Now we're going to find out does this motor run? So we're going to get our propeller, stick it on the end. Okay, you can see it's the same motor. There's, there's the little dot that I had there before. Stick your negative onto the body of the wire. Get the end of the pin on and flick it. And that runs. See how that runs. Okay, so that would not run before. So by putting our multimeter on it, we know it will run. All it needed was a clean. That's all. That's all you need to do. Okay. So obviously when we come to put this in, we will put the motor in so that, because don't forget this is, that's a cranked, cranked end, it's not in the center. So you put that in, line it up so that now that pin is in the center of your fuselage. You can see that that's not in the way of anything. You run your cable down to the spring, you tin your spring, you solder this end of the cable to the spring. You can then, if I have one with me, which I did have a moment ago, take your switch, put your switch in, put your battery in, and if your switch is a good switch, it will run. You can get rid of that and all you have to do is get some silver foil. In fact, why don't I go into the kitchen now and see if I can get some uh, silver foil. So, I have some silver paper. That out. It's just what I've got out of the kitchen. And I've not rehearsed this at all. Uh, what we do, we're going to make that into a little tiny square. And the thickness we want to be achieving with that is about three millimeters. So it's going to be a total fluke if I get this right first time. Because what we really want to do is make a really good connection and disregard the switch which if we're being honest about it is not exactly what you call brilliant now i can't get that perfect because my i'm not strong enough so squeeze that together okay 
Should be around about right. We can put that up there. Okay. Hopefully that's... I haven't sold this in yet, but uh, we're going to try it. It's just off the cuff, just to see if it'll work just like that. Get your battery in there. Just to see if that will work. Where's the propeller gone? There it is. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. So you can quite happily put your model together. Of course, it stops have hit the propeller. There you go. That motor was not working and now it is. Okay, there you go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go. So, there you have it. Get it clean. Get it clean. Get a good connection. Get a good connection. Put your silver foil in. The battery's not going to blow up or anything. And that will work. And as I said, if you can get yourself a multimeter, they're not that expensive. For as long as you have a resistance, yeah, the motor will work. And that is probably the worst motor I had. It came out gungy, if you remember, I was cleaning the ends here. It was all horrible. This was horrible. The inside was horrible. It wouldn't work. And now it works. And that, my friends, is how you get your motor working. So get yourself some... Can you see that? Yeah, get yourself some of that. Put the lid on when I'm thinking about it. Get yourself some of that. Okay. Get yourself some flux, some cotton buds, decent hot iron, decent solder. Make sure your battery is good. It's a new battery. Okay. And if you can afford it, a multimeter and you will get that motor working. So I'll be quite happy now to carry on uh, dealing with this dinky toy, sticking it into the caustic soda, getting it so it comes out like this one, all nice and ready to go. I know the motor works, it's all soldered in. So what I will be doing is to put that in there. If I can get the cable around, that's it. Put that back in there, correct position, and I shall put the underneath back in. I will then put the screw in wherever I put it, put the screw in, and then I will now prime that, knowing that the motor works. You don't want to get paint under there because that's going to cut off your connectivity. Okay, that's what you've got to remember. So put this together, then start to spray it and paint it. Okay, so give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, ring the bell, make nice comments. Because everybody likes a nice comment, I'm sure I do and you do. And we'll go on to the next step of rebuilding, revamping your Messerschmitt. And in this case, it's a BF109E dinky toy. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoy. Bye.